Hey folks, Eric Shadell here, the HVAC Service Mentor. Welcome back to the channel and thanks for watching. I'm so glad to have you here. Now, it's not too big of a secret that HVAC technicians uh, tend to be an opinionated bunch and will defend those opinions vigorously through arguments. One of the great debates that we have about air conditioning service comes to refrigerant gauges. And this is true whether you have digital gauges or metal folds, um, dial types like this one. The question comes around, is it okay to, to keep pressure on your gauges when you're not using them? Or should you always reduce the pressure, relieve the refrigerant out of your hoses after every use? And this is a great debate, and I gotta tell you, there isn't exactly a 100% right answer to this. So let me go through what the arguments are and let you guys decide for yourselves which way you wanna come down. After you watch this video, do me a big favor, get down there in the comments section and let me know what you think. Let me know what you may have been taught do you still believe that now? Have you come to believe something different? And did this video perhaps maybe change your mind from one camp to the other? I want to hear about it, whatever it is, let me know. By the way, while you're thinking about it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Lots of really cool videos like this, the one that we do on a regular basis, and I wouldn't want you to miss one. So subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so that you get updates and enjoy the show. So first of all, let's talk about keeping pressure on your gauges. And what we mean by that is you put your gauges on a system that you're working on, you're testing the refrigerant pressure, and of course, refrigerant flows into the manifold set and uh, pressurizes the whole system and moves your needles to whatever the pressures are, right? Right, of course. And now you want to bleed a little bit of air out of there so that you don't have any air in the in the manifold set. So you psh, psh, little little bit of pressure release there and get the air out. And then when you take the hoses off almost everybody today is using low loss hoses like these that trap the refrigerant inside the hose when you remove it from the system rather than just spraying all over the place the question is should you keep that refrigerant in there or should you blow it off before your next job and that's a great question now the arguments for keeping the refrigerant in there are something like this for one thing, I don't have to be so concerned with contaminating other systems in that if I have air in my gauges, I don't want to get air into that system. And keeping the refrigerant in the gauge set just saves steps. It prevents me from removing refrigerant from every system I work on. Obviously, if you're allowing refrigerant to flow from the system into the hose set and into the manifold and into the gauges, and then it stays there, and then you blow it off to the atmosphere, well, now refrigerant is being stolen out of that system. If you keep the pressure in your gauges, you're only stealing a little refrigerant from the one system that you hooked onto, and then all the other ones that you hook onto, you're not stealing anything from them. They're going to stay the same. Pretty valid arguments, right? Those, and uh, pretty much that's it. Well, now here's the con side of it. If you're working on multiple different types of refrigerants, which almost all air conditioning technicians do, right? You may need to connect to R410A in the morning and R22 in the afternoon. Well, if you are keeping refrigerant in your manifold set, this can increase the potential that you will cross contaminate from one refrigerant into another. And that is a problem. Cross-contaminating oils isn't as big of an issue, especially just from a manifold set, but cross-contaminating one refrigerant into another system can be a very big issue and that can cause unsatisfactory operation to say the least. Now, one way around that is to have a different manifold set for every refrigerant that you work on. And that used to be not so hard to do. You only needed two for the most part, 410A and 22. But nowadays things are changing to the point where you need, may need four, five or six different manifolds to do that. And that can become cumbersome. But I would suggest that the most compelling argument against keeping refrigerant pressure in your gauge set is this. When you want to start a air conditioning testing process, you're checking the charge, you are analyzing the performance of the refrigerant in the system. And to do that, you have to put gauges on. You need to have an accurate read of what the pressure is. 
And in order to do that, your gauge has to start off at zero. If you're running around with pressure in your gauges all the time, if you're running around with pressure in your gauges all the time, like this one, if you relieve that pressure off, is your gauge going to go back to zero? Are you sure? I learned this the hard way. I was going around charging willy nilly doing this, that, and the other thing. And then one day I decided to um, blow off the pressure of my gauges for some reason. And lo and behold, my gauge looked more like uh, this one. How long has it been like that? You don't know. I have no idea. But what I do know is that every pressure I measured with that gauge while it was like that was inaccurate. And I was inaccurate. This is true of digital manifolds and um, analog gauges as well. On your digital manifold set, if you have refrigerant in your gauges and you turn the unit on, it's most likely going to self-zero. A lot of them will do that. Not all of them, but many of them will. And so you could have 50 PSI in your, in your hoses and your um, manifold will read zero PSI because it assumes that when I get turned on, I'm at zero and whatever I read is zero. And then it bases everything off of that. So you got to know that your gauges are at zero, and that is probably the number one compelling argument. Now, if you're, um, say, for example, you're on a, a, a big light commercial building, you're on a roof, and there's 25 split systems up there, for example, and you needed to check them all the same day. If you start off with your gauges at zero and then go from one to the other to the other without bleeding your pressure off, most likely you're going to be just fine. But if you're going from place to place to place to place to place to place all day, every day for a week, by the end of that week, how many bumps and bangs has your manifold set taken? Could you be out of calibration? You don't know until you check. So if you're doing anything critical, if you're doing anything um, where you really need to be accurate, I would recommend that you start with your gauge at zero with no pressure off. So I guess when it comes down to it is... Um, there are arguments pro and con for keeping pressure in your gauges. And I guess it really comes down to what are you doing and what is the environment that you're working in and what are you facing? This is going to help identify what's appropriate for you in that specific situation. But one thing I would suggest is maybe start every day with your gauge at zero and adjust your calibration to zero and then take it from there. Chances of it changing dramatically from one minute to the next are a little slim. If you want to be absolutely certain, start with your gauge at zero. You got no, you got no worries. All right, folks. Well, hey, thanks for watching. I'm Eric Scheidel, the HVAC service mentor. Don't forget to comment below. I want to know what you think. And uh, while you're thinking about it, go to the website at www.hvacservicementor.com. Check out the training opportunities we have there for HVAC technicians. And, um, don't forget to sign up on the email list. When you do, every new sign up gets a free full length training course so you can check it out and see what it's all about. Anyways, thanks for watching folks and I'll see you next time.